Alright, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, we need to talk about Tropical Storm Henry, which is expected to become Hurricane Henry, which now has a very good chance of impacting the northeastern United States, including the New England regions of the United States. I'm going to talk about all those things within this video. Now, before I get into things, be sure to smash that like button, leave a comment down below, and subscribe for more weather-related content. For today's comment of the day, I want to know, do you think this one will impact the northeastern United States? And if so, what intensity do you think it'll be when it does? Let me know in the comments down below, and I'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video. Obviously, this is a very unfortunate situation in general. I mean, just very, very startling, honestly. Uh, it's quite a rare event as well, so we're going to need to watch for this very closely. And I will say this, the National Hurricane Center's cone forecast doesn't really acknowledge this risk as much as I think there is a risk there. Uh, I'll show you guys on the spaghetti models. I'll show you guys on the individual models later on, but a vast majority of these models have a direct impact to New England, specifically Rhode Island, Connecticut, Massachusetts, there in the southern New England region. Uh, these models are really, really keying in on a direct impact to those states, which is obviously a very concerning look, and I'm going to acknowledge that risk within this video. Also, there is a chance that that does not happen. We will go over that as well later on. First things first, we're taking a look at uh, trop or sorry, Hurricane Grace real quickly, which is impacting the Yucatan Peninsula. This might be a tropical storm by the time I'm uploading this video, but as of this morning, this is a hurricane impacting Mexico. This one is expected to downgrade to a tropical storm, but then re-intensify to a hurricane and then hit Mexico again, just, you know, much more in the, the more mainland region of Mexico there, and then obviously drop in intensity after that fact. This one really got suppressed to the south, really wild to see how far south that one ended up going. Here's the five-day graphical tropical weather outlook, and as you can see for Grace, hurricane, like I said before, Henry, still a tropical storm, might even be a hurricane by the time I'm uploading this, so Grace and Henry might do a little bit of like a switcheroo or something, and then we see uh, Fred up there in the northeast, so the wild thing is Fred is bringing some rainfall and a little bit of wind up there for the New England states in the northeast, and then Henry might come back through and give him a second round of that, obviously a lot worse with Henry possibly, so we're going to be watching for all these possibilities a little bit later on. Here we are taking a look here at the satellite imagery for Henry. And as you can see, there's two areas of taller clouds. We see the darker reds there kind of on the more southern side of it. And then those much darker clouds on the northern side. Usually this is an intensifying storm trying to develop a little bit of an eye wall area. When we see these two areas of taller clouds set up, that's usually how it starts. Um, so we're going to be watching for that really closely. Here's that National Hurricane Center's cone forecast that I was talking about. It's just too far east, honestly, at this point. It uh, obviously, there is a couple of models on the spaghetti model guidance that do have it going out to sea still, but 95% of them or more have it hitting the New England states at this point. Could that change? Absolutely. We see these things change every six hours uh, when it is a rather large risk. And I think the idea here is to kind of reduce panic, but I just really want to put all the options out there on the table and show you guys all the possibilities. And if I feel like there's more of a possibility of an impact, I'm going to tell you guys that, you know, I'm not going to try to hold that back to reduce the amount of, you know, information going out to the people. Uh, I, I think people deserve to know, and that's why I'm bringing it up here. Uh, there's a good chance it still goes out to sea as well. I would say it's maybe 50-50, maybe 60-40 at this point, 60 uh, land impact, 40, you know, out to sea. But um, I think there's a much better chance than what this is portraying. Now, what we're going to do in a moment is we're going to move on, and I'm going to show you guys their most likely arrival time of tropical storm force winds, and also the probability of tropical storm force winds, because it appears like they think there's a much higher probability of tropical storm force winds than that cone forecast would suggest. So we'll take a look at that in a moment. Then we're going to move right on to spaghetti model guidance, intensity guidance, uh, and even some individual model guidance as well. All right, now here we are taking a look at that most likely arrival time of tropical storm force winds. And as you can see, uh, we pretty much have around Sunday morning time frame to Sunday night is when the most of the impacts would be arriving for New England. Now, the bad news is that even if it does go out to sea, we would still get some impacts on shore for New England. Um, so regardless, we're looking at some windiness at this point. But obviously, if it hits directly, we're looking at much more major impacts in that scenario. And now at this point for Rhode Island, a lot of Long Island, uh, Connecticut, and Massachusetts as well, we have around a 30 to 70% chance of tropical storm force winds at this point. 
Um, that could be expected to increase, you know, over the next 24, 48 hours as we approach this storm. If it is going to be a direct impact, you will see a 90 to 100% chance of tropical storm force winds because it's going to be a tropical storm if that was the case. Uh, here is some of our spaghetti model guidance that we're just getting right into here. Uh, first things first, our GEFS model, which is our GFS ensemble model. And this one is rather concerning. Like I said, there is quite a few of these that actually do show it going off to sea, out to sea. There, as you can see, we have a lot of different scenarios on the table here. Overwhelmingly, I think the majority here take it either just offshore of New England or really onshore, obviously. There, as we can see, the mean average is going right over uh, Cape Cod, actually, matter of fact. But here's the thing. If we see this one go to the west of where that track is, you see New Jersey, Long Island, those kind of Connecticut, Massachusetts impacts, we see a much stronger storm in that, that scenario because we have much warmer waters there, better conditions, uh, and a majority there actually, you know what, all of those turn orange, which actually indicates that this one would be a below a 980 millibar low pressure center, which is obviously a very strong tropical system. So we're going to be watching for that possibility as well. Again, we're keeping all the options on the table. And again, it's about a 50-50 or 60-40 here uh, chance in these tracks. But there is some models that have it a little bit more of a chance. So what we're going to do is we're going to move on and we're going to show the European model and then also the Canadian model and then all the individual models as well. All right, now here is those uh, European ensemble models here on the screen. And as you can see, this one also has its mean average actually doing a loop-de-loop -loop in this scenario. Uh, we see this one really, really, really uh, kind of looping into New England, hitting Boston directly, actually, which, which would be really bad, kind of looping and then heading back out to sea. That would cause this storm to really just stick around for quite a while and probably bring more rainfall, obviously, because of that, more impacts in general. But you can see many of these bring this storm very close, if not onshore to New England. And then about 50 or 40% of these are just out to sea. So again, it's that 50-50 about, I would say. And then here's that Canadian ensemble model. And as you can see, again, we have a lot of these going onshore to New England. We also have a lot of these going way out to sea as well. This Canadian model is usually all over the place, and it's usually the worst of the three, though. I will say that. Here's all of the individual models, and this is where things get a little bit more concerning. This is as of 6Z on August 19th, but as you can see, I think there's only about two or three models here that don't bring this one very close to New England, close enough to where we would see in New England the worst of the impacts. Uh, as you can see, a majority of these actually have this hitting around Cape Cod, uh, which would bring some of the worst conditions there for Boston and a lot of Massachusetts, maybe even the coast of New Hampshire and Maine as well is where I would suspect the worst of those conditions to be in this scenario. Uh, but also, um, you know, areas to the to the west of this storm as well would get some uh, pretty, pretty bad impacts. But we see there is actually a group of models there, maybe three or five, somewhere in between there, three, four, five, something like that, that take this one into Connecticut and uh, – in Rhode Island potentially and up into Massachusetts. That would also be quite an impact, impactful solution there as well. Here's the intensity guidance. And as you can see, this one uh, is expected to be a hurricane, maybe even a category two or three. Uh, so we're gonna be watching that intensity guidance with these models and, and how intense we expect it to get. But after 72 hours, we pretty much get this one on shore and it begins to weaken there according to most of these models. Now, here's the European model's wind forecast. This is our gust wind forecast. So this just shows you where the storm is at. This is from Fred, and as you can see, they're having a 30 to 40 mile per hour wind gust, pretty widespread in there already. Then we see uh, Henry showing up here, according to the European model, where we have 50 to 70 mile per hour wind gusts there in the red. Uh, but look at how close this one gets by time we're reaching about 2 p.m. on Sunday, right next to Cape Cod with those uh, 50 to 70 mile per hour wind gusts. And then it actually curves around Cape Cod and hits Boston directly afterwards, uh, bringing, it's weakened by this point, but 34 to 50 mile per hour wind gusts afterwards. Very impactful solution, obviously. Here's the GFS model. And as you can see, this one has much stronger wind gusts, which this model is known for overdoing things. So take this with a grain of salt, but it has 80 to 100 mile per hour wind gusts with this one. The maximum is 106, actually, matter of fact. I think this is well overdone, but we're still gonna watch the track for this one. Uh, as you can see, it's south of New England, but this one has it, again, hitting Cape Cod, kind of that southeastern Massachusetts region. There's great agreement here from this model and the European model, which is obviously concerning. 
Here's the Canadian model, and you can see it's pretty much in the same spot, maybe a little bit further north, but it has that southeastern Massachusetts hit, and it obviously is very much so in agreement. So we're seeing great agreement from the European, GFS, and Canadian models so far, which is obviously concerning as well. But not only that, we also have the German Icon model on board as well. This model isn't usually one that I use because it's not known for being the best, but once you combine the fact that this one is in perfect agreement, uh, with those other three models. Now we have four models basically showing the same exact track. We're within 72 hours. Uh, that's obviously a very concerning look. Now here's actually a simulated satellite imagery from our HWRF model, which is a hurricane model. So this model focuses on uh, tropical activity. And as you can see, this satellite imagery actually looks very similar to how it looks right now, which is a good sign. Obviously you want it to look how it actually looks. Uh, but this one very quickly has this one becoming a maybe category two or three hurricane here uh, offshore of kind of the southeast mid-Atlantic area, which is what the intensity models are showing as well. Uh, so it's going to, you know, have an eye. It's going to be a stronger hurricane, kind of that mid-tier hurricane. And this one eventually has this tropical cyclone hitting the same exact region, southeastern New England there. Uh, and, and we get a fifth model on board with almost an identical track. Uh, but regardless of this, actually, our confidence tab today, we're at a three out of six because so much can change and the smallest shift in these models uh, could bring this one offshore of New England instead of being onshore according to all of these models. So we're going to be tracking this one very closely. Obviously, this is probably the most concerning storm I've seen all year um, as far as snowstorms, severe weather, and tropical cyclones. I'm the, more, I'm the most worried about this out of any storm, you know, or weather system we've tracked all year. So we're going to be watching this one very closely. For today's comment of the day, I asked you guys, how long do you think until uh, we get into a fall pattern and how long do you think this heat wave will last? And James Moore said, I think it'll be about a week and a half of well above average temperatures. Then fall temperatures will make their first appearance. And like I said in yesterday's video, that's when that kind of change in the teleconnections occurs. So I think that's a good guess there. Good comment of the day there by James Marr. For today's patron highlight of the day, I want to thank you all for supporting the channel, but especially our platinum patrons, John Benbenek, James, James Wade, Dovey Nagel, Lily Pan, and Donna Carnes, alongside our diamond patrons, Bill Roberts, Marcus Connolly, Noah Harley, Michael Cotalesa, Cat Bite, Charles Tennant, Cindy Klein, Mark J, Luke Lego, Gary's, John Khaleesi, Dwight Phelan, and Steven Grunenthal. If you would like to be a part of this awesome patron end screen of the day, you can do so by joining our very exciting Patreon page in the description and in the pinned comments down below. I would also like to thank our channel members, Hair Firms 1 and Cat Bite as well. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to smash that like button, leave a comment down below, and subscribe for more weather-related content. I will see you guys in the next video.